we don't have a teacher shortage we do not have in this country. Shortage. There are thousands and thousands of teachers who would probably love to go back mm-hmm. to their job if they had the support, if they had the income, if they had yeah. the supplies to do their job appropriately. But the problem is when we grab these people off the street and just say like, hey, you have, you know, a high school diploma and a certificate, come teach this third grade class. Well, now you're diminishing the skill set that every other thousands of teachers in the country Went spent debt years for. Went into well, debt yeah, for. spent years in college for and have probably tens of thousands of dollars in student loan debt for. And now you're just you're just like totally mm-hmm. downplaying the amount of work and the amount of skill it takes to be a teacher. It's not as easy as just no. walking in front of the classroom no. and, you know, showing someone how to do something. No, it's not at all like that. And that's like, I think, a big misconception when people are like, oh, I could be a teacher. Anyone could be a teacher. During the Chappelle show's heyday, there was an episode where Tyrone Biggums, a character he created, was invited to Drug Awareness Day at a middle school. Now, while the school didn't hire him as a teacher, the skit did an excellent job portraying how some schools just let anyone in front of students without proper vetting. From a 2022 Washington Post article titled, Wanted teachers, no training necessary. Schools have long since experienced a staffing crisis before 2020 C-19, driven in part by low teacher pay, cuts to school spending, and less interest in the teaching profession. Now, many states have loosened job criteria over the years to draw more people into the teaching profession. In 2019, only 15 states required that candidates pass a basic skills test, which measures whether they have a grasp of math, reading, and writing, according to a report from the National Council on Teacher Quality. Heather Pesky, president on the National Council on Teacher Quality, articulated the challenge with the chef's kiss. So we put our least prepared, least qualified, least experienced teachers into the schools where students need the most. When we do this, we ignore the research on how you should teach kids specific skills like reading or early numeracy or the knowledge base that exists for successfully serving students. Man, I told y'all in 2020, I said that we have a teacher shortage. (laughs) Well, rather than fix the core issues such as student behavior and salary corrections, some states have decided to, you know, lower those standards even more. But it's not as simple as just hiring Joe Schmo off the street and putting him in front of a, a class as mentioned by the young lady in that previous clip in the beginning. Nah, Kimo Sabi, it's more conniving than that. So here's what districts do. They, they hire people in as substitute teachers and then sneakily <laughs> rear them into a teacher position, usually to monitor a class or actually be handed materials being asked to teach a class, minus all that training stuff. Throw that out the window. I mean, come on, who needs that? Administrators have had to get real clever to save their budget while meeting tight deadlines to fill positions at all costs. Here I have a personal story from, uh, and forgive me if I mispronounce this name, Fo- Sophia Entzminger, who actually posted and decided to be so kind to share their story on the community tab here on my YouTube channel. I was a healthcare worker for two years who happened to also have a Spanish degree. I was hired with zero training in any way to teach Spanish to in a Title I middle school. I took over in the middle of the year from a long-term sub who was a gym teacher. Classes were large, filled with some native Spanish speakers, kids with IEPs, and the rest didn't know how to ask to go to the bathroom in Spanish at a level two. I didn't have my own room, but a cart I pushed around. I didn't know the computer system for education or anything. I lasted four months and left. Now I have more training and will start again in August of this year. The first experience was painful. Teacher shortages reflect poorly on districts, and this is where I have to defend admin just for a little bit because sometimes the conditions of their campus are not by their hands. Man, I have observed external third-party consultants who were given power and authority over the principal to dictate how that campus should be ran. This led to a lot of, you're suspending too many kids, and other nonsense when principal decisions were rightly justified to suspend those students. And their hands just became tied up because of these external consultants. 
What society doesn't understand is that we all collectively suffer from children who simply age out of education without getting an education, if you get what I mean by that. They're promoted through this teaching crisis without a strong academic foundation, and by the time they turn 18, they are out in the world without a clue on what to do. Research shows that students with a poor reading ability are 10 times more likely to end up as a criminal. I've seen this firsthand, up close and personal, in real life, where young black males who could not read well behaved in a very primitive manner, almost prehistoric, Neanderthal-like, but in their own little ghetto way. Because they didn't have the reasoning skills and everything was purely off of emotion, they did not have the temperament to think things thoroughly through or the patience compared to the small number of minority black males who were well read and extremely well behaved or manipulated through that group that could not read. Here's an interesting thing. You may be asking yourself, how is this your problem? Well, I'm about to share with you how it's your problem, how it's everybody's problem. Adults who fool themselves into thinking that they are safe or dodge the bullet because they are not teaching, lucking up on some lofty job, runs the risk of running into one of these freshly made criminals who act insane. Because people only focus on their personal lives, we don't connect dots to see the big picture oftentimes. But it's a double-edged sword because as Jordan Peterson would like to say, at some point we all have to clean up our own rooms before we go out there and we try to save the world. Now that's a euphemism for having intense focus on making sure our lives isn't a mess before trying to clean up someone else's. And when you can first help yourself, you can then help others properly. So not an attack on you as a viewer, not an attack on me, myself, but it's to try to help and express and get you to understand that we all have a responsibility to carry in this regard. There's always a butterfly effect or six degrees of separation always at play. You may not think that what you do doesn't affect someone else, but it does scale. A small act of kindness towards one person can dynamically affect the trajectory of one's life. All of us, I mean all of us, are interconnected some kind of way where what I do can help or harm the next person. Let me share a story with you, Shorty. Let me, let me share this story real quick. I was on a road trip and I, I stopped in a restroom, all right? And usually there's no smoking, but a gentleman went in before me and decided to <sighs> light one up in the bathroom as I waited outside and it was just very easy to smell. Now, because he was only focused on getting his nicotine fix, he didn't consider the person coming in after him could have had asthma, causing some sort of anaphylaxis shock afterwards. Now, he would have been long gone and none the aware on what might have happened to the next person his smoking might have caused or how that would have actually harmed the person following up with them. That person, of course, being me. Fortunately, in this case, I don't have asthma, so I'm very grateful for that. But in, a, in hindsight, in a situation or in a case that I might have, I could have been a dead man walking or, or not even walking, just dead at that point. But let's play a reverse Uno card. Cause I'll place myself on a hot seat for a second. Now... I've gained weight. You can't really see it with me sitting here right now as you see it from the chest up, but I've packed on a few pounds over the past five years, we'll say. Now, while my food indulgence may be a personal comfort, what I have underestimated were the indirect consequences my weight gain would have on my children and social life. I'm not as fast and I get winded very quickly. I'm lazier. I end up becoming a health burden on other people rather than being able to properly be fit and contribute to the other to others' needs. I'll never understand this whole overweight movement that's going on online when imperial, imperial data just clearly outlines the limitations you impose on yourself from overeating, all the health issues you accumulate. But it's not just the, the physical effects, it's the mental ramifications that's just twice as bad. I mean, you're dealing with an attack on your self-esteem, the insecurities, the not being fully present with family because you're mentally consumed with not eating too much or how your body will react to certain foods. I mean, these are things that I've personally went through and then looking big in pictures and avoiding taking pictures because of it. <laughs> At this point in time, you might think I was a vampire the way I avoid mirrors. Man, this video is getting a little bit more therapeutic than I thought. So let's return back to the main topic at hand, but it all serves a purpose to the overall theme. So here's all, how all that information connects to what I'm mainly talking about. So the long-term ramifications for not having properly trained teachers, I think we are gradually experiencing these effects with the increased criminalization in heavy, soft-on-crime areas like San Francisco with the majority of the criminals being young black men 
who more than likely hated school because they couldn't do the work or have the capacity to do so. Students who are academically low will rather avoid the challenge of work and misbehave than allow their flaws to be seen and get some help. It's all too shameful. Alas, as good help will continue to be hard to come by, everyone is affected by this vicious cycle of miseducation. Again, you can learn more about this vicious cycle and why it will never end in my new book, Trouble in Paradise, which is out now. Go ahead and go to theteacher.show. Link is in the description and pinned comment below.